Hello everyone, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis of the Shankar AS Academy brought to you by the Civil Speedia team. So this video is for the current affairs for the date 24 September 2024. The topics for discussion are as follows. First article discusses about first article titled watching child sex abuse material and offense supreme court is an article which discusses the landmark judgment by the supreme court uh, child pornography has been uh, changed to child sexual exploitative and abusive material where there is broad understanding of what child sex abuse is all about and this article is from the hindu the next article titled use urban solid waste for sustainable highways roads ministry to state discusses about the ministry of road transport and highways to use solid waste for the construction of highways so that there is sustainable development and at the same time there is a usage of bio organisms for the construction of highways instead of inert and this article is from indian express and finally the article titled new drug scheme for eight rare diseases discusses about having a 12 new drugs for eight rare diseases under a scheme which would be initiated by the our government of india and this article is from the live mind moving on to the first news in a landmark judgment the supreme court has classified the viewing downloading sharing and storing of the child sexual uh, abuse material under both the act of uh, poxo that is the protection of children from sexual offenses and under the it act that is the information technology act so uh, in light of this article let us see what the judgment contains first is the uh, term change from child pornography to child sexual exploitative and abuse material that is seem the supreme court has uh, told how the word child pornography doesn't properly or accurately reflect the gravity or the intensity of the crime thus the supreme court has decided to come up with this abbreviation so there is inclusion of both exploitation and violation and abusing of child when it comes to uh, child sexual abuse also the supreme court has directed that instead of child pornography uh, the term theme should be used in all uh, legal judgments and documents now let us move on to the psychological impact on the victims that is the child first is having a uh, lasting trauma this lasting trauma is perpetuated or stayed or increased due to the uh, images videos and recordings which are still in the internet thus uh, do three components there will be a lasting traumatization uh, for the ch uh, child victims and this can lead to making the children to fall into continuous victimization where there is continuous sharing of uh, such pornographic uh, materials so it 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 ends up with the cycle of victimization of the uh, children thus the supreme court has termed this act as a secondary abuse where there is circulation of the exploitative material which lead to the violation of act and at the same time violation of their own right to be away from all of these exploitative materials now looking into the possession and transmission the court has ruled that even uh, mere possession that is even having the material uh, having the exploitative material or the sexual material in your phone or through your laptops or your through your sd cards or through your computers and so on even without sharing is a criminal offense so under section 15 of the poxo act storage and possession of the exploitative child material is is an punishable act now uh, this section of uh, poxo act that is the section 15 is been uh, reinforced by the ruling that even if uh, having the storage or possession even without the intention of sharing it the person can be held accountable even if it is not actively distributed also the ruling by the sc was made clear that deletion or the deleting of the exploitative material does not resolve the responsibility of escaping from the punishment because sometimes the case can be diverted as even if they have st stored the exploitative material they might uh, defend themselves that they have deleted it so the supreme court made sure that even uh, they have deleted it 
it comes under the criminal act next is the constructive possession the court the supreme court has come up with the constructive possession where the person will be hold accountability for having even the power and even the knowledge to control or modify or destroy the exploitative material even if they if they are not actively possessing it so through this this kind of uh, possession or this kind of having the power to you know create or control such material also comes under this uh, new landmark judgment so uh, the victim is being given fair share of judgment and the person who has involved in this criminal act is being uh, held responsible through every corners so even if people have uh, accessed or downloaded and then deleted it cannot be escaped now looking into the criminalize uh, criminalization of the access and the viewing the act does not just criminalizes production and distribution of the exploitative material but also the act criminalizes accessing or viewing it on any digital platform of the exploitative material regardless of their physical possession now moving to the government's role and direction here again the legisl in the legislative amendment uh, the child pornography has been replaced with this elaborative abbreviation next is uh, here the uh, supreme court has additionally asked the government to uh, give a ordinance or a temporary law to expedite that is to make sure that the uh, amendments in the laws are been executed properly so i hope there is a holistic understanding of what this act is all about now let us move on to the mcq Moving on to the MCQ for this uh, article, let us see a question. What concept did the Supreme Court evolve to hold individuals accountable mere, for merely assessing or viewing the sec, uh, child sexual exploitative and abusive material without active possession? The option is uh, the correct op the options are immediate possession, constructive possession, negligent possession, and passive viewing. Here the option is the correct option is option B, constructive possession. Now moving on to the next news, Ministry of Road Transport and Highways have, have issued policy guidelines to use urban solid waste for the construction of the national highways through the inert materials. That is the materials which do not react chemically under specific conditions and uh, when, it is, when it is mixed with along other substances. So these inert materials uh, can be used which are generated to bio remediation so these inert materials uh, can be used in the highway uh, embankments thus the ministry aims for the construction of sustainable highways where it helps in reducing the reliance on the soils which are used from the agricultural fields so the government has initiated two pilot projects one is the Delhi Mumbai Expressway and second is the Ahmedabad Dolera Expressway. The ministry has set out uh, methodologies for testing, sampling and collaboration with the local bodies to for the sourcing and utilizing of these materials for the construction of the highways. So now let us see what the uh, ministry comprises of. The Ministry of Road and Road Transport and Highways is the apex body which works under the government of India which is responsible for the road transport and highway development. So this stands as the governing body whereas the parent ministry would be the central government where it functions under the central government. So now looking into the core responsibilities, first is the policy formulation for the national highways and the road transport. The ministry is responsible for these two important uh, functions. Next is the ministry will be overseeing the development and maintenance of the national highways. Next the ministry is responsible for the implementation of the act such as the National Highways Act 1956 and Motors Vehicle Act of 1988. Thus altogether the ministry focuses on the promotion of road safety and regulation of the transport services along with the constitutional and a legal backup. Here in the ministry has certain wings like the transport wing, highway wing and the road safety wing where each wings would be handling specific or a different function. Now looking into the associated bodies along with the ministry, the ministry is uh, linked along with the National Highway Authority of India and along with National Highways uh, Infrastructure and Development Corporation, sorry, Corporation Limited. 
now we have seen what uh, the ministry comprises of now let us see what the bioremediation means here bioremediation means using of biological organisms that is the bacteria fungi or plants to remove the contaminants from the or the pollutants from the environment so looking at the advantages first it is eco friendly here it reduces the need for the harmful substances next is cost effective bioremediation is nothing but removal of the pollutants right so uh, compared to other conventional clean up methods bioremediation would be uh, cost effective next is its versatility bioremediation can be used to uh, clean uh, almost all kinds of pollutants which includes even oil spills and other heavy materials next is the minimal disruption here through the clean up it uh, helps to balances the ecosystem by avoiding drastic uh, alterations next is looking at the disadvantages as compared to the advantages uh, even though bioremediation is cost effective it is very slow in process it uh, takes a lot time to remediate the pollutants remediate is nothing but in environmental terms to clean up next is site specific reason where certain pollutants or certain pollutants or environmental conditions can be specific to a certain uh, ecosystem and reduce their effectiveness next advantage is its dependence on the environmental factors since since uh, the bioremediation uses biological organisms they can be dependent on certain conditions weather conditions or uh, temperature or certain ph level to for their uh, effectiveness to be used uh, i hope thus i hope that topic of remediation is being clearly understood now let us move on to the mcq with reference to the uh, bioremediation consider the following statements it is a process that uses chemical agents to degrade pollutants in the environment it is an eco friendly method for treating contaminants in soil and water bioremediation is effective regardless of environmental conditions such as temperature and ph which of the statement given above is or are correct option a 1 option b 2 option c 2 and 3 and option d 1 and 3 only uh, correct answer is option 2 here the statement 1 is obviously wrong where it doesn't use the chemical agents but it uses biological organisms statement 2 is right and of course statement 3 is also wrong where bio biological organisms are uh, equally dependent on environmental conditions like the temperature and ph now moving on to the last news the indian government has come, uh, come up with a government initiative to produce 12 new drugs for eight rare diseases under the new drug scheme here the indian government tries to promote india as a global leader under having affordable healthcare system where it aims to reduce cost effectiveness when for diseases like muscular dystrophy where the disease is about the having a uh, muscular problems and also reducing cost effectiveness for uh, gouche diseases where it uh, affects the liver and the nervous system here these two are uh, one of the rare diseases where the government tries to cover up so financial assistance up to 50 lakh per patient is available through the na national policy for rare disease so now let us try to cover up uh, the important topics under this article first let us see what is rare diseases the definition of rare disease in india can be defined as the rare disease which affects less than 1% in 2500 people in india so uh, this range can uh, differ in global contexts where in us it affects fewer than 2 lakh people so looking at the genetic basis most of the rare diseases are genetic in origin here uh, almost 80% of the rare diseases have genetic cause the rare diseases uh, are often chronic are often progressive and it can be life threatening or degenerative here degenerative in medical terms means how a medical condition can deteriorate one's own health now looking at the national policy for rare diseases of 2021 here the policy was introduced by the government of india to address the challenges faced by people who are with rare diseases so in this policy the diseases are categorized into three components which is based on their treatment needs first is the curative 
component where there is an option to cure it where uh, the second component is the uh, lifelong component where the rare disease would be presenting would be with them for lifelong and they need support for it and next is the supportive component which is the extensive of the second component where along with the lifelong rare disease there is more supportive through funds and technical terms now looking at the key objectives of this policy here the policy tries to reduce the treatment cost when it comes to rare disease through funding and having support and providing support for the aim uh, ultimate aim of affordable treatment here under the policy there is a creation of na national pa patient registry so that there is better management when when it comes to uh, tracking of the patients and management of the rare disease this registry will help for the policy makers to have a base for research and development so that there is allocation of uh, resources and along with it allocation of resources there is collaboration with many stakeholders like the private ownerships ngos and so uh, government so on therefore there is development of new policies and new investments now looking into the financial assistance under the national policy for the rare disease here the national policy for the rare disease are providing up to 20 lakh per patient for category 1 diseases under the rare disease through co-sharing of the fund by the central and the state here category 1 is the life threatening disease category 2 is the chronic disease category 3 is less severe and category 4 is a very rare disease now moving on to the next point here for uh, many rare diseases like the enzyme replacement where there is a need for expensive treatments the government facilitated projects would be bringing in crowdfunding platform through it next is the scheme for a uh, scheme called aishman bharat where the national policy for rare disease integrates along with the pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana that is a scheme for the health insurance coverage now let us see what is orphan drugs the drugs which are developed for rare diseases are known as orphan drugs but there is always a low demand for these drugs as it is very costly when it comes to the demand as well as their availability in the market so in india for there are few examples when it comes to rare diseases first is the megalastat for fabry disease enzyme where uh, it affects the liver kidney and so on and next is the enzyme replacement therapy for uh, lysosomal storage disorders here there is enzyme uh, reduction where it leads to enzyme deficiency and accumulation of harmful substances in our body here for the orphan drugs the drug controller general of india oversights and oversees the approval of the orphan drugs in, in india india has provisions for fast track approval process for orphan drugs india under the new drugs and clinical trial rules of 2019 so i hope uh, the information of what is rare disease and under what policy it comes and at the same time what is often drugs are being cleared so now let us move on to the mcq consider the following statements regarding rare diseases in india rare diseases affect a very small percentage of the population the national policy for rare disease 2001 provides financial assistance for the treatment of certain rare disease genetic disorders form a significant portion of rare diseases in india which of the above statements is or are correct option a 1 and 2 only option b 1 and 3 option c 2 and 3 and option d 1 2 and 3 the correct option is uh, option 1 2 and 3 all of these statements are equally right Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to give a like, comment and a share. And to further not to miss any other contents, subscribe to our channel. Thank you and have a nice day.